morning, everyone, to the Power Chat series. I hope everyone's having a wonderful morning. Uh, and I'm excited for our guest today, Philip, uh, for the Gulf Coast Karate Championships. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well today. I got up and trained, so I'm feeling pretty good. So, okay. yeah, nice. I'm ready to get into it. All right, well, it's, it's only 10 in the morning and you got up and trained. So that's very impressive. Um, I'm assuming you also have school later today. Yes, yeah, so I'm homeschooled. So a lot of times I'll train, then do school, and then, you know, train later in the day as well. But yeah, so I like to start my days with training and everything. That's nice. We will talk, we will come back to your schedule, balancing school and training throughout the day. But let's first talk about the Gulf Coast Championship. So how did you do there? Okay, so I won my two creative division. So I won in TKO, the Texas Karate Organization. There is, there's creative forms, there's creative weapons, and there's traditional forms and weapons. And I performed in creative forms and weapons, and I won both of those divisions. And then I got second in traditional forms. Okay. And then I won the overall grants because it's okay. second number. And so on this circuit, creative does not necessarily mean can't trick, right? No. It, in Texas, it's pretty much just like creative. So not traditional. So not traditional. So like yeah. open form type. Yes. Okay. Um, how about the competition? What was that like there across all ages? So Miss Ramirez and Alex Mancias both ran this tournament so well. There was a lot of diverse competition from the 18 plus, even 30 plus competition all the way down to the seven and unders. Like one of my personal students, Bear Rodriguez, he killed it down there. He's only six, but he rocked that division. And then in the higher up divisions, there was plenty of competition as well. So, yeah. And Alex not only helped run this, put on this tournament, but he's also your mentor, a friend, uh, a long time person that has been in your karate life. Can you tell me a little bit more about that relationship? So when, okay, let's rewind a little bit. When I was younger, my instructor who passed away in 2019, Mr. Garcia, he, in, he introduced me to tournaments and then a few tournaments in, he was like, okay, I need to pass you on to somebody who knows a little bit more and is up and coming. And so he introduced me to Alex Mancias. And when we, we met, it was kind of just like an instant boom that there was this connection. And he taught me just about everything I know from basics to the tricks to everything. And since then our relationship has kind of changed and taken its own different form and now he's kind of like a big brother to me and he's just he's always been there for me so I'm really appreciative of him so I see the Korean flag behind you I would then assume that you have a background in Taekwondo what's yeah. your martial arts background and how has it evolved over time so I started karate when I was basically three years old but I was literally born across the street from our old karate school so I've been there since I was basically born and from then I got my black belt at eight years old and then went for my second degree basically two years later. And that was around when I started like tournaments and stuff because in our karate school, there was no tournaments. Nobody, I didn't even know that was a thing until I was like 10. Mm -hmm. So uh, my background is in Taekwondo and that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. All right. And now you have since transitioned to a name on the circuit um, how has that been and what's your competition journey been like and how did it start? Okay. So I was 10 when I started, mm -hmm. walked into my first Texas tournament with my commas in my hands, my, uh, uniform already on. And we didn't even know you needed music or anything. So walked in like with the shoes, just, yeah. So that was the story for the first few tournaments until I met Alex. Mm -hmm. And then I realized what being good at karate actually means. Mm -hmm. And so I started practicing and then that was just in our local circuit in TK. Uh -huh. So after that, that was in 2016, I did two tournaments and then 2017, I did like a few more and the 2018 was our first real season. Mm -hmm. So in 2018, I did like a full season of local tournaments. And at the end, I did a tournament in November called the league world finals in right. Uh, I believe it was in Nevada, mm -hmm. in Reno, Reno, right? Um, and so 
that was like my first out of state tournament. I was really excited for that. And throughout there, I kept progressing, getting better. Like at the beginning of 2018, I couldn't do anything. And then by the end of 2018, I had landed cart full, Webster, B twist. Like I was really starting to kind of build that tricking. And then that really kind of expanded because 2019, so 2018, I did the tournament in November. That was out of state in Reno. Then in 2019, I went to AK Warrior Cup, which was my first NASCAR tournament. And that was such a, like a culture shock. I, mm. I got to the tournament and everybody was good. <laughs> like everybody there was so good. And it, it was just really great. And getting to see like the top competitors, like Mason Bumba and just Shane Billow, like all of them, it, it was really just crazy to see the top level. And then moving forward from there, uh, 2019, I did seven NASCAR tournaments. Mm-hmm. And in at Warrior Cup, I believe I think I got seventh in like one division. So like barely top, like barely doing anything. And by diamonds, I had gotten second in a division and I was really stoked about that. So again, just a kind of progression and then moving into 2020, it was my first 14, 15 year. Mm-hmm. And I was against like Ben Jones, Esteban Tremblay, all, all of these just high level athletes that I even looked up to. And then competing against them was just such a crazy experience. But at Warrior Cup in 2020, again, I got like seventh. Like I did very badly. Mm-hmm. And by competes, I tied for first. So it was just kind of like this constant, like kind of an uphill battle. I didn't really have much of a team on my back yet until June of last june of 2019 when i got on team gypsy and just kind of moving up in the division trying to build my name and everything has been kind of a experience and then um just kind of keep going so through competes 2020 i I was finally starting to make some progress for myself and then quarantine happened Mm. and so in one way it kind of sucked because i felt like i was getting close to that breakthrough win but in another way, quarantine was one of the best things that could have happened to me as a competitor because I took full advantage of just practicing and training and getting ready. And it was just one of the best things because I progressed so much from 2020 in March to when stuff came back in June of 2021 because yeah. I also started like working on traditional forms with Joey Castro, who's in the comments here, giving me all the love. Um I, I learned a whole new style, learned Shotokan, as well as I learned the, um, like, Anan, Anandai, all of those different types of styles. So I really took full advantage of that. And since then, it's kind of been, you know, 2021 was kind of my year for breaking through and building a name for myself. That just shows your discipline and your drive, because a lot of conversations on Facebook and, and around the circuit during COVID was who's training and who's going to show out when the competition comes back, because no one really knows what's happening behind the closed doors. The true thing we briefly talked about social media with Joey Castro's show and how that can be kind of deceiving uh, based on what work people are actually doing. But it seems like you are one of the people that took advantage of the, uh, the time off now in that time off in addition to training did you do any of the virtual tournaments yes so i started um when when it first went down there was i believe ocean state grand nationals was one of the first ones that went virtual and so we filmed the videos and doing all of the virtual tournaments was always it, it was fun because you get to do your form and you get to keep going but it's also a little bit more stressful because you're like, ah, oh, is this the perfect one? Is okay. this the right form? And you get nervous about which one to submit. But we did Ocean State. Um, and then after that, I believe in May, yeah, it was May of 2020, the virtual SMA circuit started. And so there were all these different tournaments. And I competed through the first three, I believe, then took a little break because our local Texas tournament circuit had also gone virtual so there were there were plenty of tournaments there was a point where we were doing tournaments all of the time so Mm -hmm. um then towards the end of the season i believe it was like september october i started doing them again i did the september sma tournament then i believe there was one in october and then in november in november of 2020 was like one of my most dominant two weeks i've ever had like i felt so strong because 
I went from on Saturday of I don't remember the exact date, but on Saturday there was the Texas like state tournament. Mm-hmm. And so I won all my divisions and then I won the overall weapons grands. And then the next day on Sunday, the SMA virtual tour had its divisions. I won two of those. And then I went to the overall grands and I was 17 and under. And I was competing against people like Bella and Alice Gross and just so many people that I didn't even, I, I had never competed against before. And I, I won that too. And then the next weekend was the Destin Open, which was my first ever Pro Mac tournament and also the first tournament back in uh like uh, Mm -hmm. real life, like back in not virtual. And I won musical weapons there and I won traditional forms and that was it. And then I went to the overall weapons grands and had the unfortunate luck of going first in both grands Mm. and still managed to pull the weapons grands there. And that was such a strong moment for me. I was like, wow, I just had so much success over just two weekends. Yeah. And then since since then, you have gotten on the U.S. Open stage. Uh, you won. You you competed in creative weapons on stage at Compete. Um, and you've just been able to find success, find your way onto that stage in such a short amount of time because it was only 2018, 2019. That's four years ago, three years ago. Um, how do you how do you think that you found that success and that progress at such a high rate so it, it's a few things one it okay let me rewind one it's it's mostly just the consistency i try and train my releases and a lot of the difficult things in my forms a lot so i'm not stressing about them during my forms consistency over time is one of the biggest things that you can do to help you because even if maybe you're not the best in the division if the top people mess up then you can still sneak in and win. And that was one of the first things that I was just like, okay, I got to be the most consistent. So that was the first thing. But the main reason I would say I have gotten to the point where I am now is just how badly I want it. I I just, since I started, I've just been like, like in 2020, I would watch runoffs and be like, that's where I want to be. That is the place I want. I want to be in runoffs, competing, getting all the hype, all the love. And then in 2021, I did that. And then I was like, okay, I, I need to make it to the night show. And um, and I did it at US Open. And I was so just grateful for the experience. And just that that's just where I, I feel like that's where I belong. On stage, putting on a show. That's just, that's my favorite thing to do. So martial arts competition has such an interesting combination of competitors that are intrinsic, intrinsically motivated. They have that drive within them that doesn't need to be um developed it's like deep down in them but then there's also those extrinsic motivations of getting on stage getting those awards getting that first place i think it's a great it's a great environment for kids and for competitors to flourish because of those motivators now uh what in now that becoming on stage is sort of like your expectation your bar to reach and winning ultimately what's your next goal in martial arts the biggest goal I have is basically just inspiring the next generation because at one of the last tournaments I was at Cowboy Up, a parent came up to me and he was like, hi, Philip, how are you doing? Like, how did, do you, do, did you do your divisions? And I was like, oh, because I didn't really know this person. But apparently their daughter followed me on Instagram after US Open and I completely like inspired her to start training and that was one of the, the most heartwarming feelings I've ever had. And, and like on my TikTok, like people will comment like, oh, you inspired me to start doing karate and stuff like that is just the most just exciting thing ever. So that's one of my biggest goals is just inspiring the next generation. That's wonderful. And it's when they you don't even know it sometimes until months later that someone has been inspired by seeing you. And it's just so heartwarming. You know, they want to snap a picture or the parent comes up to you. So I'm sure you're going to have many more of those encounters since you're just in the junior division and you have a lot more time in this sport to go. Yes, ma'am. Well, Philip, thank you so much for coming on the Power Chat series and for for waking up in the morning, getting your training in before this. Uh, very inspiring. And for everybody watching, thank you so much for watching the Power Chat series this morning with Philip. Thank you for having me.